So, so I got diabetes because I got a long family history. And so I carry the bad genes. And then although I was running all these miles, I was running to try and maintain my weight. And of course, the weight was, it was difficult because I was insulin resistant and I was storing fat on a high carbohydrate diet. The instant, the instant I reduced the carbs, I lost the weight and my diabetes is nicely under control now. So that's, uh, and now we know that diabetes is entirely reversible if you get it early enough and if you get people off high carbohydrate diets. So that's the evidence. And so again, it just shows that we're just not designed to metabolize carbohydrates. So the moment you get off the carbs, you start to burn fat, your insulin drops, and then all the beneficial effects occur, including inflammation. And as far as I understand it, inflammation is largely driven by fat cells, particularly in the visceral organs and the liver. And once they become overfilled, they start to re release inflammatory hormones. And that then gives you this generalized inflammation. And that's, it's under-recognized. And just another point, that if you're eating a high-carbohydrate diet and you're even a touch insulin resistant, you will have an extra kilogram of weight in your viscera, or maybe two kilograms. And people, they look at the runners and they say, oh, but they're thin. No, no many of them will have visceral fat. And if you're a world-class athlete, one kilogram is the difference between winning and coming second or third. And they don't realize it. They just keep pushing the carbs and the visceral fat is there, but they don't recognize it. And so they're impairing their performance. So you watch the Tour de France cyclists. Remember, these guys are eating 700 grams or more of carbs a day. When they get to the bottom of a hill, they throw their bottles away because they think that those 500, milligram, 500 grams is going to be a problem. Well, they're carrying 500 grams in their gut and the intestine because that visceral fat. And the only way to get rid of that is to eat a low-carb diet. The resistance to change is unbelievable in this country. I mean, literally, I was sidelined for, for promoting this diet. And I went before the Health Professions Council, which is the council that controls what doctors do and say. And they accused me of misinformation, essentially, and bad medical practice by promoting the low-carb diet. And I it was as a result of speaking to parliament or in parliament that that happened and nothing changed. No <laughs> individuals have changed, but there's the, the guidelines are still exactly the same as they always were. So that hasn't happened. I think we, we're winning on the, on the low carbs and exercise side. That's definitely changing. And uh, I think that more and more athletes are adopting low carbohydrate diets not just in South Africa, but globally. But they, they're very scared to talk about it because it, it gives them an advantage. And they don't want to tell everyone what their advantage is. So until we started doing this work uh, and we got the realization that there are two pools of glucose in the body and no one has ever acknowledged that. And they are totally differently regulated. So if you talk to the average person involved in exercise sciences or nutrition, they'll say, no, but the carbs, they all just go the same place. You know, they go here, there. They don't. They are directed differently and you use them quite differently. So let's talk about the small glucose pool. That's the amount of glucose stored in the liver and in the bloodstream. Now in the bloodstream, there's exactly five grams, five grams, which is one teaspoon one teaspoon of glucose in the bloodstream. So you've got five liters of blood. It contains five grams of glucose. Now, when you take your, your orange, I think you mentioned orange juice, probably that's got maybe 20, 30 grams. So now imagine you've got 30 grams coming into the intestine and being absorbed very rapidly into the bloodstream. But the bloodstream's only got room for five grams. So now it says there's a crisis. We've got to get rid of the 20 extra grams. And what it does, it immediately drops it into the liver. So the liver takes it up. And if it can't, if the liver's already full, it'll turn that into fat, visceral fat inside the liver and elsewhere. And that's where the problems start to arise. 
Once you start packing on the visceral fat and converting the ingested carbohydrates to fat, that's when you get insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, etc. So that's the first thing that happens. The second thing that happens is if your muscles haven't got much glycogen, that's the storage of glucose in them, they will also take up some of that glucose from the bloodstream. And my hypothesis is that the the muscles store glucose purely to lower your blood glucose level. So they're a dump. What the scientist will tell you is that, the sports scientist, is that that glucose in the muscles has a special role. It is what makes you the great athlete, and we've disproved that. So if it's not functioning to make you a great athlete, what's the large glucose store in the muscles doing? And me, it's obvious. It's just storing the glucose to get it out the way to lower your blood glucose. So, so to summarize, when you take glucose, you have to understand that if it's more than five grams, it's going to overwhelm the blood, su- su- blood system. And your blood glucose is going to rise, then you secrete insulin. And insulin has many detrimental effects. When, and if you become habitually always raising your insulin, ultimately the insulin stops working properly and it can't get the glucose out of the bloodstream, and that's when you get insulin resistance. And as you become more insulin resistant, you hypersecrete insulin, so you always have an elevated insulin. And then that insulin activates um, a wide range of biological events in the body, and none of them are beneficial, and most of them are harmful. So that's why we talk about insulin resistance as the key driver of chronic disease.